So I'm sharing the desktop right now. And if you click on that particular URL, that then it will ask you right now I have logged in already. You can see you see it over here. Right. So once you're able to create account, you're able to log in, you will be landing up on this page. What you do, scroll down a little bit and towards your, you see here, towards your bottom right hand corner, you will have this option here. Download the desktop app. Even if you have downloaded previously, you don't have to re-download. You just create account, activate your account and that will be done. You will have it over here. Everybody? Were you able to reach this uh, section? So once it's done, it'll download for some time. Then it'll just kind of work out and it, it's going to help you. So perhaps we have two tools over here. Articulate Storyline 360. Yeah. This is the latest. And this is like kind of a more of, you can say that like kind of cloud-based uh, version. It's the open one, which I have it over here. Right. And there's one more, which you can say articulate three. I'm opening both right now. Okay. So you see, the, the, you can see it on the screen, which I'm sharing right now. The 360 and this is articulate three. Anybody knows what's the difference? This is a 360 uh, Articulate 3 interface and this is the interface of the 360. Okay, so check it out. You will be using 360, of course, because 360 only allows the trial version, right? Now, 360 is a one which has a content library and there is a lot of set of things which are there available. I mean, uh, as and when you do it, the diff more characters are there. There's a huge content library. And the documents which you upload, I mean, that's dot .story files, which is a output file which we generate from the 360 is available in a, a central repository. It's more like a cloud-based kind of an, a platform. As in when the updates are getting updated, you are also getting that in your thing. Though the tool is desktop, you're downloading it to your desktop. However, if when it comes to this uh, Articulate 3, uh, it's a, you can say perhaps this is a, a standalone uh, perpetual license tool. Yeah, so this is a subscription base. 360 is a subscription base wherein you have to take a subscription for a particular tenure. And once a subscription gets expired, you have to again resubscribe. If you don't sub subscribe, you don't get to um, get the, uh, the you use it. You cannot use it. Initially, they give you four weeks of trial, but subsequently you need to subscribe it. Or else you create another email ID, again, reactivate. But again, how long you do it? You cannot do it for a very long time. There's a limitation on that. So, uh, you all have to understand this is a subscription-based uh, package. Like your Office 360, which is a subscription base. Whereas if you see Office 2021 or prior version like Office 2019, those are perpetual license and a desktop version. So you buy the license one time, like in case of your, let's say, Office 360, uh, sorry, Office 2021, which is a desktop version, and you use it forever, literally. They give you update for a particular tenure. After that, it stops. Likewise, this one, which you see your Articulate 3 is like that. It's a perpetual license. It means you buy the license once and you use it forever. Articulate will give you the update for a stipulated time period. After that, it's going to stop. Like, for example, if you see here, Storyline 3 will receive a final update on this date. And then it stopped over. Storyline 4 has not come because they have switched to store, Articulate Storyline 360. <clears throat> but those who have, like, I have a licensed version of Storyline 3. Uh, this is the one which will stay with me forever for lifetime. Of course, uh, the your updates will stop as it's already stopped by April 2023. However, for this, it's it's not like this. I have to keep on buying the license. Then only it's going to get working. The difference is same almost. I mean, difference, there's not much of difference I'll show you. So I'm opening a new project over here. <clears throat> 
Yeah, so once you open a new project, you can see this is how the interface will look like for both. This is a interface of the Articulate uh, 3, which you can see I've opened that storyline 3. And you will all have that option, insert, slide, design, transition, animation, all that option, right? So if you see insert, you will not have a content library. Over here, all the other options are there. Whereas in your, uh, if you open uh, this uh, storyline 360, interface is same. You have only the content library and also little shareable components. So I'm just opening that now. Now, right now, I've opened the Articulate 360 and you can see it's the same thing. Your insert, slide, design, transition, animation, view, all that options are there. Only difference you will find is a huge set of repository, which is called Content Library 360, which is an additional thing. 360 image is additional. Then your text to speech is an additional thing here. You don't have it over there. So a couple of those additional options, if you go to your uh, content library, if I just click on it, you will have more characters here. But again, for us, the characters are not more because you need to buy the sub. So these are the free characters. You can see these are the photographic uh, uh, plus your modern characters. And you can see these are the classic characters. A lot of ca classic characters are there. So if I just stick on to the photographic and the modern character, then you will find only the photographic and modern right now. There are a lot of other characters, but it's included with a subscription. See this uh, icon? This lock icon? Yeah. So you cannot use it unless suddenly you, you have a subscription of it. But there are a lot of characters. So there's an advantage over here in the subscription-based model of having more characters in place. Yeah, likewise, there's an advantage of having more uh, photographs being fetched from the content library. Let's say I'm going to look for a, a photograph of, let's say, waterfall. Or let's say camping. So you will find uh, this is like how we do a Google search. Similarly, you will find a huge repository. All I have to just pick up image. Let's say I pick up this image. Sorry. There we go. Yeah, I just pick up this image, say insert. It'll be inserted on the slide. I can, it's, it's all scalable. I can increase, decrease the size. So perhaps this is what you have. Photographs, illustrations, icons, videos as a part of content library. So all I want you to watch out this section, this main section, which is basically this part of it. Okay, the rest all is same, except you, as I told you, you will have the uh, your text to speech over here in the audio and you have 360 degree images, which is a additional option, which is available in the uh, this particular but again there's other advantages because uh, content can be uploaded in a one place where other team members can access whereas in your perpetual license that uh, provision is not there yeah so but the look and feel as you can see this is a articulate three you can see the icon is a little different so i've just opened that same you will find home button insert but the content library is missing here also you will have characters see here these are the set of characters more of your uh regular characters which are there the expressions also have all that options are there for each character you have picture but picture need to be taken from your file only pictures from file it will allow and all the other options are same not much of the difference but advantage is there because it's a license so it's a subscription based model like your office 360 you have more features than compared to your you know that uh, your desktop version a little bit more, perhaps I can say. Okay, checking back. Were you able to get some progress on the download part, guys, which you were doing? This download. Okay, right. So I'm just going to get started quickly introducing you what we have it for our agenda, and then definitely we kick off. So this is the these are the topics what we would be covering. We have around approximately you can say twelve modules in place over here. Yeah. Uh, the, the 12th one is basically the articulate project. Project means you do uh, articulate uh, assignments. Of course, you do it right from the beginning, but in subsequently towards the end, you should be able to create the courses using articulate story like. So what do we have it for our agenda for this entire course, perhaps uh, understanding the uh, what exactly it is, is articulate mastering the your storyline interface to also understanding how do we work with slides, how do we import slides. And then each of the module, 
you know you will have all this in your lms also uh, in the ppt based uh, courses which you have in your lms however we will be not so much dependent on those ppts unlike your instructional designing or your content writing course because this is more of a tool practical tool so we have to do more practical hands on using the uh, that articulate 360 itself and that's the reason we may not always go back to ppt however you can refer so we will work around with shapes and the pictures uh, how can we can use it perhaps uh, pictures with the characters characters can have the shape shapes can be also corked how we can insert captions different designs of caption text boxes different tables uh, how do we work with the uh, text etc there are different options like animations which we could add up to it so all that we'll be looking into timeline is very important this is called timeline i'll just quickly show you this is a timeline see here If I just open, this is a timeline. This is a slide. This is a slide. This is a trigger over here. This all can be dock and undock also. See, I'm able to undock it. Again, dock it over here back. Yeah. So this is the timeline. So we will look into what exactly is the the timeline and the objects in the timeline. Anything on the slide which you see here is an object. This is an object. This is an object. Each one of these object. This is a table. so moment we insert something let's say these are text textual information uh, anything you insert there in the timeline those things will be inserted over here as you can see it over here more things if i insert let's for example i'm going to insert one character then i go to the content library choose a character let's say a classic character olivia and insert it now the moment i insert you will see that is also getting inserted in the timeline everybody with me yeah so all i can do drag it to the beginning because this is where it got inserted over here like after 4 seconds so you want it right from the beginning you can just drag it over here so this is where you can extend your timeline also let's say this i'm just deleting off olivia at this moment yeah so that's what we will understand over here the timeline and the objects in the timeline formatting shaping positioning in the timeline adding the notes to it of course very important your slide uh, applying animation different types of the animation options which are available will be exploring so if i just quickly show you with your you go to your animation and then these are the animation options which you have it different animation designs which you have it limited of course there have animation of a motion path if i apply a motion path then there are couple of more aspects which will come up motion path options etc so uh, i mean pretty good in terms of what we have it we will be exploring each of them with the help of some other other activity then we have a module module 4 adding and editing the media media could be anything your audio video uh, media it could be just audio it could be also audio video enabled so we can add zoom reason to it to also a uh, uh, image and also we can do a little bit of editing not like a full fledged articulate may not give you so much full fledged option to edit but there are a couple of things uh, in terms of uh, uh, inserting certain silence or removing the uh, noise or let's say corping the audio or video from both the sides or in between corping that is all been allowed we can we can work around it we'll see how do we work with the web object web object is any uh, you can say uh, file which is there in online which could be let's say for example a youtube video so we obtain the embed code of the youtube video and we insert in our course so that it we basically refer it as a web object because you've taken from the web and that's why it's an object everything on the slide is object themes and templates which are available and there's a huge repository of themes and templates which are available uh, perhaps how do we uh, create how do we work around with a master slide templates navigation to the master slide to page numbering etc triggers layers all that plays a very important so triggers are the one will begin right from the beginning it's not like because it's in sixth module we begin in the sixth no it's something timeline trigger is right from the beginning because without which we cannot work around in the articulate we have to be looking into the variables variables of three types which is your true false which is called boolean variable your number variable and text variable so we'll understand how variables can be utilized in the course because anything which is already in build well and good you can use it which is there in your insert tab but anything which is varying in nature not fixed like number number keeps on changing 
So we have to work around with the variable and accordingly um, get it get it. And for example, a course is having a scoring. So variables can help us to change the score accordingly. And then, of course, interactivity, uh, that's what we'll begin right from the beginning, understanding different interactivity. So how do we use buttons, dialers, markers? You can say all these different options. These are the options which are available. If I just go to insert tab, hold on. Here, insert. And then these are the interactive objects. Each of them, button, slider, dial, hotspot, input markers, all this is you have it. And also the huge repository of markers. So we'll be understanding how those interactive and other interactivity which we can bring in the course. That's your eighth module and of course quizzes. There's a huge set of quizzes which are available, how we can have those different quiz sets. Like for example, if you go to your uh, slide, then you will have graded questions. There are different templates of it. Okay. And then you can click on the survey question. Then again, you have a different inbuilt survey question templates. And then you have your free form. That is also, as of course, there's a template available called Velocity, which also has a three set of thing, of course. Beyond anything, you require a subscription, a result slide, etc. So we'll be exploring each of those question types. See here, free form, survey, feedback master, uh, feedback question, drag and drop, and your quiz, etc. Shuffling the questions, etc. JavaScript will not be creating code as such but uh, we will be taking the help of existing JavaScript and uh, uh, bring some interactivity to the course. So uh, Articulate is good enough to take care of it, uh, most of the interactivities. However, there are special and additional interactivities which can be created uh, with the help of a JavaScript, so we can do so. So we have an option in our trigger also, if you just see here, we, this is a trigger wizard. I'll show you anyway how, but you will have an option to add a JavaScript over here. See here, execute JavaScript. So we get the script and we paste it over here and then say, okay, so that that script will be executed. So that option, how do we use that option? When do we use that option? We will explore that. That's a JavaScript and accessibility. So learners can be of different types with disability also. Uh, people who cannot see, maybe they have other type of uh, physical disability. Uh, so how, how our courses need to be compatible for all type of learner. How do we ensure that happens? Perhaps this is a section on that. And you have players. So we'll see how, what are the options to uh, also uh, customize the players. We have two type of player, modern and the classic player in each of the course which you design. And then projects, of course, you have a little bit of real time project which you should be doing. And we'll understand how we can upload it to LMS, etc. So this gives you an end-to-end, -end, I would say, approach. Uh, only thing is that the main aspect would be you must do a whole lot of practice. Practice, practice, and practice. That can help you. I'm going to tell you, okay, this is the interaction. These are the methodologies. But unless until you practice, this is not going to go ahead. This is going to be like stalled at one place. Anytime you miss any particular day, by chance, I know you all are occupied with your own work also, then please do listen to the recording. That will help you. After listening to the recording, you should try that uh, interactivity. And then only the practice will come. So this is a practical tool. So we will be doing everything practically as well. Right. So let me just get started a little bit on the introductory side. And then we will get and understand, uh, start working with it. Before we start working with it, I think it'll be good to have a little bit of background information. So I've just created a little bit of series of these uh, details so that we all get an idea about this uh, course a little bit. So starting with that. Yeah, so as you know, it's an e-learning authoring tool. The Articulate 360, Adobe Captivate, it has these inbuilt templates, icons, graphics, etc. Which you can see it over here. You insert tab, you have inbuilt uh, content library, which gives you all that icons, illustrations. You can have videos, you can have character. And anything is not available in your content library. You want to get it from your computer, you can do so by inserting from file. You can take it from shapes from here captions from here, videos you can upload from file, or you can take it from the content library by clicking on this option. You can search for a particular video. Let's say we search for a video on, let's say project management.
yeah and then it can give you some there's no video i can click on let's say project maybe some videos will come see the second this year 17 second 21 second 23 second so that's been mentioned all you need to just select the particular video you can preview it before you select of course you preview it a little bit over here so that you gain idea what exactly the video is all about some videos may not have audio let me just optimize it for audio video clip you can see the movement yeah it's just the five second video and if you feel yes is good to take, then you can go ahead and insert it. So it get inserted over here. Yeah, so full size, and then you can make it a smaller. So the moment I insert, it will get inserted in the timeline also, as you can see it over here. I can drag it to the beginning itself. So the this is just to demo you the understanding that you are having all these inbuilt options. So it's like your your Captivate or Lectora, Spring, Camtasia, like those kind of application. But each application have its own, I would say, interface. Captivate interface would look a little different than your Articulate. Uh, do you see some similarity with the PPT, PowerPoint presentation people? Yes, and the moment you have some uh, picture, the format option will also get highlighted picture or some kind something to be formatted but the beauty of it is it's beyond ppt far 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 beyond capable than ppt because this articulate will allow you to get the output file called scom file which your uh, ppt won't allow it's mainly for presentation ppt powerpoint presentation but here it's the this if you see here your publish button and you go to this uh, let's say publish then you have multiple publish option in which you can see here you are publishing it to let's say LMS and then you have this different output option which you can get the SCOM 1.2 2004 I'll explain you each of it what it is basically 1.2 is the most prevalent one so only when you get the SCOM file the SCOM package it can be utilized to upload the course to LMS otherwise you cannot so it allows the interactivity, which is not possible in the PPT, right? So as it's been already mentioned, inbuilt templates and all that makes the job easier. For instructional designer, they need to be uh, having that good knowledge of the articulate so that they can uh, create the course. So remember the difference now. Instructional designer will create instructional material using the tools. So an instructional designer must have a tool knowledge Articulate storyline is one among them. They can have multiple tool knowledge. Some video tools, some uh, you can say like your app rapid authoring tools like Captivate or your Articulate storyline, little bit knowledge about the Canva, etc. Your e-learning developer, there's another terminology you may have come across, e-learning developer. They may not be necessarily doing the storyboard. But they'll be mainly having a tool knowledge which they are specialized and they will take the storyboard from the instructional designer who created it and create the e-learning course using the storyboard. What is a storyboard? Anybody up? Come on. So these are the, some examples of the e-learning authoring tool. There are many in market, uh, which among them, these are kind of, you can say Lectora, iSpring. iSpring is also a cloud-based platform. Interface is more like a PPT kind of feel. Because there are these storyboards, uh, PPT kind of feel, uh, everybody finds it pretty user-friendly. It's a simple thing, you know. Earlier, the, the web developer who has a knowledge of coding, they can create an e-learning course because they have coding knowledge. However, now you do need not be a coder or a software developer, a web developer, but you can create the learning course even without having a technical knowledge. If you know how to use story, storyline, articulate, articulate storyline 360 or any other such tool, a rapid authoring tool. So we are just learning that interface. We are not coding as such. But what are those options which are available, which will help you to work like a coder? Those is what this particular tool. So these are the many other tools which are available in the market in which Camtasia, your Captivate, Articulate, Lectora, those are kind of kind of popular one, uh, which has been, iSpring is also depending on the organization to organization. Articulate is absolutely catching up a lot. Now, when we create course, course will have different interactivity level. 
right? Some courses are very highly interactive. Like you have a lot of uh, clicks, a lot of drag and drops, a lot of hotspots, a lot of uh, levels to climb. And you have your scoreboards giving you a lot of points and all that. So there's a lot of uh, interaction uh, between the learner with the course. You know, just, just imagine playing a mobile game like a survey surfer or any other mobile game. What happens? What happens when we do so? Do you need to constantly maneuver? Isn't it? That there's a lot of interactivity because in the moment you take away your attention from the screen, you may lose the game because there's a crash. Maybe. Or you may you may lost that particular score point. So there's a there's a high engagement of the learner in the particular interactivity which you create. We create interactivity in our e-learning. So that interactivity level can be th up to four levels. Level one, hardly there's any interaction. Like, like click, 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 move on. Level two, there's some interactivity there. Level four. So interactivity level again differs. So moment you come to level four, you can see the experience level is uh, more and there's a complex branching. There's a more simulations. But in the level one, it's more static. So recommendation would be, you should be in a position to create at least level two, three, four kind of courses. I would say three and four rather. So this is where you will see, see here, drag and drop, short matching, more of a scenario-based branching, scenario-based case studies. And here you are adding up more things, 3D regulations, gamifications, avatars, etc. Yeah. So that's one aspect to be kept in mind. So interactivity will come from here, you guys. You can see it over here. All these interactive LM objects which are there. These things also helps us in bringing interactive. But these are interactive objects. We'll be seeing everything, guys, each and every point which is there for us uh, to be looked at, right?